You're watching Soul Care 360 with Tim and Carling Ingram. Listen, I want to leverage every minute that we have today because we just really have a special show today and we're excited about what we're going to be discussing today. My co-host is Dr. Tarver. We are on location and Dr. Tarver brings so much to the table. I just want to say to you, thank you so much for agreeing to co-host while Tim is on the road building for his family. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Tarver is just such an amazing woman, and um, I love her being on the show. But aside from that today, my special guest is um, someone that I have literally known all of my life, <laughs> literally <laughs> known all of my life. And um, she agreed to come and talk with us today, and I, I'm really excited about having her here. Um, she is my oldest sister. Uh, of our parents, of six children. Her name is Pastor Miranda W. Townsend. To me, she's Randa. And so I want to welcome you to Soul Care 360. I appreciate your yes. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm looking forward to what we will, will be discussing. This okay. All right. So we're going to dive right in. Dr. Tarver, you know that we always talk about trauma, mm -hmm. right? We talk about trauma in a sense that, that is, trauma can be, you know, this, this impactful, very hard, impactful episode of something that happens in our lives. And we, it, it has such an impact on us that uh, it can change the trajectory of our lives. Lives It can change how we see ourselves and how we behave and how we act and all of those things. And so in order for us to be able to deal with traumas, uh, we have to understand first that there is a trauma. And then we have to understand what steps we have to take in order to, um, to uh, just be in a, a space of healing and be in a space of uh, understanding what has happened and how I can get from feelings of being um, in pain and anguish and stress. Would you agree with Absolutely, that? Absolutely, without a doubt. <laughs> okay. I definitely think this is, um, as we're in this year of 2024, for a lot of people, they are re-experiencing trauma that they hold in their bodies because we know that the body keeps the score. Correct. And so a lot of people are feeling some angst, some sadness, some confusion, just not knowing what exactly is going on with mm -hmm. them. But that is because there might be an anniversary of some trauma mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to feel symptoms, but they're not necessarily sure where they're coming from. So this is perfect timing to be able to talk to people about what that could possibly look like. Right. And uh, the reason why I talked about, the reason why I brought up trauma is because uh, today we're going to be discussing something with my sister um, that uh, maybe a lot of people don't experience. Um, and the story goes... Um, at six months, I believe that was it six months. Actually, I think it was a little bit later than that, maybe a year. OK, so the story goes that at, at a year old or six months to a year old, my mom says that she was um, she was feeding my sister and she noticed that um, she was not able to suckle um, with the bottle. Um, she wasn't able to grip the bottle. And what happened was the milk or the formula began to just dribble down her chin. And then I think she noticed at that point the uh, twisting of the, the mouth. And I think she also noticed at that point um, the eyelid mm -hmm. being um, swollen. And so we're talking 60 years ago, rural Alabama. So, of course, they take her to the doctor and um, they say something like, well, maybe it's Bill's, Bill's palsy. OK, maybe uh, there's some type of nerve paralysis. And sure, we can do brain surgery. Really? Alabama rule? No. So that was a no. Um, and so all I have ever known about Randa, Miranda, is that um, this is her. This is who she is. This is how she's always looked to me. But it's been about um, a year ago or less. Something happened. I've always known you as, you know, my sister, you're my former pastor, and I've just seen you 
be Miranda. The Lord allowed something to happen. One day he allowed me to absolutely see your face. It was right here up front and personal in my face. And at the same time, what, what happened was there was just this overwhelming feeling of sadness that came over me and compassion that came over me. And then right after that, what I heard was, how did she make it? How were you able to make it? Because from the age of awareness, all you've ever known is that I'm different. That's correct. Okay. And so I want you to tell me how did you make it? How were you able to not lose it? And were there difficulties? Because we talk about traumas. Traumas can be internal. But when you have those external things and factors that people can actually see, you know, I'm a little heavy. Okay, I can lose some weight. Or I can dress so nice that people be like, oh, okay, she's a little heavy, but she sure is fine. Okay. But when you have something like a distortion, what do you do with that? What did you do with it? Well, in all honesty, it has been a difficult route. Um, having to experience the kind of turmoil that I did experience with people um, and the fact that I was assessed uh, by people and, you know, subsequently dismissed uh, mm. because there was something mm. visible. And it has been an experience attempting to overcome uh, the pressures of being different. Mm -hmm. um, when everyone else can smile mm -hmm. and their smile may be profound, it, it may be engaging. There is just only one side of my face that will actually respond mm -hmm. to a smile. And um, having to go through that as a child, mm. it has been, um, it's, it's been challenging. <laughs> and one of the things that the enemy has always attempted to do was to uh, cause there to be a setback mm. to keep me from progressing. <laughs> um, the one thing that I love about God is he will cause us to be in places that we don't think that we should be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's good. Um, I've always uh, been a studious person, mm -hmm. uh, just enjoyed reading um, in, in a place of comfortab comfortability, being able to uh, just engage in the intellectual things. Um, but the one problem, mm -hmm was the d distortion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's front and center. Mm -hmm. And I, I, one of the things I want to say before I, before I hear from Dr. Tarver, because I, I know that you, you, you're getting ready to, she, she's getting ready to go there. The one thing that I want to say is, you, you are right. One of the things about you is that we, we, you, you're a trailblazer. And when I say a trailblazer, I, I mean that from the, the, the depths of my heart. There's always been a sibling rivalry because she's the oldest, tried to whip me, all that stuff. Try it now. But uh, <laughs> but um, that was the responsibility that she was given. But by her being different, I, I didn't see it stopping her. Um, you set such a high bar because everyone knew, okay, is this Miranda? Are, are, are you a Williams? Are you, is Miranda your sister? Uh, she was in the gifted class. Why aren't you? Well, I don't know. But... <laughs> Be that as it may, your bar was always set high because you were in the gifted class. You were always um, very smart and studious. And then the other thing that 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 God allowed me to see in that very present moment was, but she did. She pastored. She traveled. She did all of these things with this front and center. Dr. Tolver. Um, Pastor, first of all, thank you for sharing sure, your sure story because I always believe that through our stories other people are set free. Absolutely. And so um, you mentioned um, tricks of the enemy and how God was already preparing you for what was yet ahead. Um, talk to the people about 
one of the things I frequently hear from people is that they feel as if they've been abandoned by God. Mm -hmm. especially when something happened so early in their development. So here you were not quite a year um, mm -hmm. old and this happened. You had no control over you. Mm -hmm. did it. But a lot of people would take that as a punishment. Mm -hmm. like, here I am. I've been cursed. I've been, um, I've been neglected. I've been um, uh, cast out, if you will. Uh, God couldn't have loved me in order for God to have allowed this to happen to me. And it affects how they see themselves and how they talk to themselves. Can you talk with people about that, John? Sure, sure. All of those things that you just mentioned mm -hmm. were the exact things that I've experienced mm -hmm. and I had to deal with it within myself. Mm -hmm. um, there were really no answers that I could receive from people mm -hmm. in general. Um, when I learned to, to talk to God, mm -hmm. and that was at, at a very early age mm -hmm. as well, um, those were the expressions that I would make towards him. Why am I this way? <laughs> Why was I chosen mm -hmm. to carry this? And um, there were times where I could understand and there were times that I didn't understand. And it has been a building process. Mm -hmm. I had to learn at an early age also that sometimes the general population can be very hurtful, yeah. very, very, very mm -hmm. painful. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember one time, and I may have been... 12, 13 maybe, mm -hmm. and was a part of, um, maybe a little older, was a part of a um, homecoming parade. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, and this is what the enemy will do, he will put in your mind um, what you think a person mm -hmm. may be thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just as sure as what I heard in my mind uh, concerning me, I had been uh, chosen as a representative for a ministry, a ministry, and was um, riding on the, the car because we were going to go down the street and wave and, you know, just be cute and, <laughs> you know, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And I overheard someone as I'm... Um, sitting on the top of the car. Why did they choose that ugly girl? Mm -hmm. Her face is twisted. Mm -hmm. You know, those kinds of remarks are very, very painful. Mm -hmm. And the intent, and I, I see it um, as a tool that the enemy has utilized mm -hmm. or attempted to utilize mm -hmm. against me mm -hmm. uh, most of my life. Um, to say that um, I'm unattractive, mm -hmm. to um, insert in me that I'm worthless, yes, mm -hmm. um, that there is no value right. in me. And I've had to learn how to overcome mm -hmm. these situations but or, or these presentations. What, what, what I want to, what I want to add, or I, I want to ask you, okay, you started school and in your interactions. And I know that the children, they, you had to have on special glasses. Right. right. And so back then, cat eye, it, it wasn't a, it at all. It wasn't a fashion statement like it is now. It's a fashion statement to have cat eye glasses. And so you had these huge cat eye glasses and everything was. And so with, with you uh, having to endure that every day, what was it like? Um, not did you have a refuge at home? Did anyone understand what it was that you were going through? Because again, here we are, your family, all we see is Randa. And so it is in hindsight that God allowed me to say, oh my God, what was her internal self like? Because you did, you, you continued to just function, 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 function as if what was, what happened 
to you didn't happen to you. I've never heard you as a child um, express, you know, that I feel ugly or I don't want to wear these glasses. I never heard that, that I can remember. And it was just, you know, um, you know, as we get older, like you said, and, and, and you begin to look at certain things. But at that at that time when I was, you know, looking at certain things and looking at you, you were full blown into everything. You were a business owner. You, like I said, you were a pastor or well, you were pastor in a church and you were traveling and you were teaching and you were doing all of these wonderful things that most people are not able to get over to do because they can't get over that trauma. They can't get over that that um, rejection. They can't get over those harsh words. You know, they don't know what to do with it. So where was your refuge? Well, one of the things that um, I always used to do growing up as, as a young person, um, I would talk to God. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm like, I love you. Mm -hmm. Why am I this way? Mm -hmm. I'm different from everyone else. Um, so my conversation with God was the thing that held me together. Mm. And in, in, in all um, honesty, there were a lot of times I did not know that I was talking to the right one. Mm. Um, but expound knew, on that. What does that mean? What, expound well, on that. See, in God, there is a place of safety. Yes. In, in God, there is um, a, a covering. Um, one of the things that we learned in Sunday school is that he created us. Mm -hmm. And um, my question was always, but why am I this way? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I'm not pretty like everyone else? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I'm having to experience this? And I knew that God had something for me. Mm -hmm. And that I was to pursue whatever it was based upon God. Okay. But did it ever make you resentful? Did you ever have to... I had to say, you know what, Lord created me a queen. Okay. Mind. So you you all Bible. Well, basically, <laughs> basically because um, from my mother's womb, yeah. Yeah. I was called. Yeah. And the one thing that the enemy definitely wanted to do was to shut my mouth. Mm -hmm. What better way mm -hmm. than Bell's palsy? Mm -hmm. What better way than to cause it to be, my face to be twisted mm -hmm. and unattractive? And, you know, during, during the 60s and 70s, you know, fashion and, and beauty, mm -hmm. that, that was the... Uh, the way in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. And then when you're from a, a rural area yeah. um, and people are not as abreast of certain things, mm -hmm. then they're going to go to the side that is weaker. Yeah. 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 That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Tarver, uh, speak on um, uh, differences, uh, you, you know, and it's so funny because we were just talking about that. Exactly. We are, it, it, it's always that way. We, we talk fails. about it never fails that we talk about some re, some 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 very relevant points, you know, right before we start the taping. And so just speak on those differences. And have you had um, to uh, counsel someone or deal with someone who had those uh, tr th those um, um, things or 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 or? Um, have had weaknesses or have had some types of uh, um, ailments. I, I don't know why I'm stumbling this morning. Have some type of ailments or some things. You think so? <laughs> some type of ailments and things that they've had to deal with. Um, and see, I can, like I said, I can hide a lot of things. You can hide a lot of things, but you can't hide that. How do you deal with that? How have you helped people to cross over um, and to progress through it? Absolutely. So let's address a few things. Um, one, um, I would say sis hasn't always been all Bible. <laughs> yeah, time I like life, that. <laughs> um, when you struggled. And I like what you said about how I see myself is how I think other people see me. Mm -hmm. So what I heard 
was why would they allow this girl? She's her face is twisted. She's not attractive. Why would? And that's what happens when we're different. Mm -hmm. Cognitive distortions is what we call it. Mm -hmm. Now they're based in truth because I am different. But different doesn't mean deficient. That's right. However, when I'm in that place of feeling different, what I will do is I will create a narrative that reinforces for me that my different is bad. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, in yeah. my growth, and I'm, I was hearing your journey, and, and I wish we had a little bit more time to yeah. unpack it, but we don't. I was hearing that in your early journey, it was, it's bad. That's right. Right. Later now in your journey, you were like, oh, God, that was a distraction to get me off course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I had good. to learn to seek you and talk to you. But at first, I didn't know if I was talking to you. And that's what a cognitive distortion will do. Mm -hmm. You don't know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. So in my head, there's so many different voices. I don't know if that's God. Is that me? Is that the devil? They all kind of run together um, because it is meant to shut you down. Mm -hmm. We don't know that, um, that our differences are really tools because what happens when one area is not as developed, another area gets even more developed. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a fact. Yeah. That, that's a real Absolutely. truth right there. Mm -hmm. Because you weren't caught up in the distractions. Because So what happens with us is we'll put the mask on. Mm -hmm. And the mask will not allow us to dig deep and get down to where it is that we really need to be to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you were chosen and the reason that you were given what you didn't know was a gift at that time is so that you wouldn't be distracted by these other things. And it allows you to be able to study. Absolutely. Mm, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's good. I, I really Absolutely. like that. I like that because what it, it distracted you from, and then there were some things in your life that you, you, you really struggled with because you were actually running after God, you were pursuing God. And, and then there was this one thing that you really didn't want to lay down, but what God did for you was he took what someone may see as a limitation uh, or a hit or something that was really bad. And he allowed you to be so super focused on what it is that God wants for me in my life and how am I going to pursue it and get it? This, this woman has always been one that was going to set her sights on something and she was going to go for it and she was going to get it. Even in the midst of, you know, you having uh, that difference about you. And so one of the things that is very important is that we can acknowledge our differences. Um, one of the things, uh, another thing that's very important that in our acknowledging our differences, we also have to be honest enough with ourselves to say whether or not our differences causes us to feel inept, whether or not our differences causes us to, uh, to have self-loathing. And I think that that's a process. I think what happens is what we have to do is once we acknowledge who we are, this is who I am. If I can make some changes, I can. If I can't make any changes, hey, this is life. Now I'm going to live it in a healthy manner. And so what I see now um, and your insight that you had uh, with everything that you have, you've had to go through, how you allowed that to propel you as opposed to really stopping you. Because as I said, the bar was set really high and the teachers would say, um, it's Miranda, your sister. And I would say, well, yes, then, um, I expect no C's. I expect A's and B's. So in the grand scheme of God, in his all-knowing, in his um, intimacy with us. He knows all of us individually, and he knows what it is that uh, will cause us to give him our whole selves. Let me just say um, thank you. Uh, if, if I were a pastor, my sermon tomorrow would be stripped down. <laughs> Because what you did is you just stripped down what we think is important. The thing that we think makes us who we are. The thing that we think creates our worth for a lot of people is physical. That's correct. But what you did is you just stripped that down and said, if I don't get preoccupied with what I look like and what I think other people see when they look at me, mm -hmm. then I can truly focus on what it is God has called me to do. That's good. And God called me to be able to let people know that you are enough. So stripped down to me is to let people know that whatever it is they're dealing with, whatever it is that they think makes them wounded yeah. or unattractive or unlovable, if they strip that away, underneath all of that is nothing but God's love for them 
in who it is that they were called to be. So thank you. Sure. Thank you for sharing this because I guarantee you somebody needed to hear. I don't need to take my life because I don't look like what I think I ought to look like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hilda, I really appreciate that mm -hmm. strip down because that is an indicator, you know, that um, there has been um, a work. Yeah that has taken place. And it's vital that everyone knows that there are things that you really do have to allow God to handle. Mm -hmm. And he is quite capable of handling it. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. And you know what? She's going to preach it. That. I knew it. <laughs> and so with that, what I will say to you is I'm very proud of you because a lot of people would not have been able to get as far as you did. Um, and a lot of people have taken their own lives because they were different. And that's one of the things that the enemy really attempted mm -hmm. to get me to do. Yeah. But it was refuted. Amen. And, I, and I'm really happy that it was. Um, thank you so much for uh, saying yes. And I know that you are, you know, you're very uh, private uh, regarding certain things. And for you to come here and talk with myself and with Dr. Tarver today, it really means a whole lot to me. Listen, what better way to end this segment than to just say, you know what, let's strip down. Let's take off all the masks. Let's just remove everything that is a hindrance to uh, our purpose and our destiny and how God wants to use us and how we want to be able to be um, uh, valuable within our family members' uh, lives. You know, we, we want to be able to speak life and not death. So stripping down. Uh, I really like that. Dr. Tarver, thank you so much. Again, you are such an amazing co-host and guest. Mm -hmm. And Miranda, thank you so much for saying yes. And this has just been really eye-opening. Um, thank you for that story. I didn't know that. Um, and so until next time, listen, you have been watching Soul Care 360 with Tim and Carlene Ingram. Thank you. <laughs>